Hit it. Welcome to the Test Talks Podcast, the place to go to geek out on software testing. And now your host, whose mission is to help you succeed with test automation, Joe Colantonio. Hey, welcome to another episode of Test Talks, a podcast dedicated to all things test automation related. I'm your host, Joe from JoeColantonio.com. And today, I want to go over the top five features in LeanFT and UFT 12.5 that will help you and your company shift left with its development process. But first, let's hear it for our awesome sponsor, Sauce Labs. Today's episode is sponsored by Sauce Labs. Sauce Labs makes test automation awesome. Sauce's cloud-based Selenium Grid helps developers test web and mobile apps across more than 400 browser and OS platforms. Sauce also supports Appium and popular JavaScript unit testing frameworks and integrates with all the top programming languages, test frameworks, and CI systems. With built-in video recording, debugging tools, and secure tunneling for firewall testing, Sauce helps you ship better software faster. Sign up at saucelabs.com with promo code TESTTALKS14 and get 20 hours of automated testing for free. In episode 55 of Test Talks, I went over some big announcements that were made at HP Discover 2015. One of those announcements was the soon-to-be-released tool LeanFT. Since it was not released at the time, I really couldn't talk or show some of its features because it was still in beta and it had signed a non-disclosure agreement. Now, I'm happy to say that LeanFT has been officially released. So in this episode, I thought it'd be helpful to go over some of the top features in LeanFT and UFT that's going to help you and your company shift left, as well as try to answer some of the questions I know you will probably be asking me on my blog at joecolantonio.com about LeanFT. So let's get into it. So first, I really just want to recap for those of you that have not heard of LeanFT or listened to my previous podcast about LeanFT at HP Discover. So some of you might be asking yourselves, what is LeanFT? So LeanFT is HP's new test tool that was developed to handle the modern automation demands of things like continuous testing and DevOps. And what's really cool about LeanFT is it actually fits into your developer's toolbox. So you can use the same exact tools that your developers use to create automation scripts. And with more and more companies making the shift left to focusing on quality from day one of a project to make sure that defects are found as soon as possible, using the same tools as your developers will hopefully start collaboration between your teams to get everyone talking about quality sooner rather than later. And this is a big deal because in my 15 plus years of testing experience, I've never, never been able to get or convince a developer to install and use VBScript in QTP or UFT or even WinRunner. So it never happens. I've never heard of anyone said, yeah, all our developers have quick test professional on the machines and they're using it as part of their development process to <laughs> test their code. So this brings me to one of the first top five features in LeanFT that is going to help you in your shift left efforts. And that is the ability to use the same languages as your developers. So right now, LeanFT supports c Sharp and Java that you can then use in your test automation scripting development. So that means not only do you get to use the same languages as your developers, but you also can integrate them with the same IDEs that your developers are using. So the first question I'd probably be asked at this time is, what versions of Visual Studio and Eclipse are supported? So officially for Visual Studio, what's supported is Microsoft Visual Studio 2012 and Microsoft Visual Studio 2013 Service Pack 1. Now Visual Studio comes in lots of different flavors. So LeanFT supports all the different flavors of Visual Studio, except, I've already got asked this question on my blog, it does not support the Express Edition. So if you have the Express Edition, LeanFT will not work for you. You need, at a minimum, Visual Studio Professional. For Java, you can use either Eclipse 4.3 Kepler or Eclipse 4.4 Luna. I do have a VM machine where I have Eclipse Mars running, and it works, so... Just what's supported right now or what's been tested is Kepler and Lunar, but I'm sure newer versions of Eclipse also will support it. For those of you new coming over from UFT or QTP, it's just important to remember that UFT is self-contained, meaning it contains everything you need to write and run and debug testing. 
But since Selenium and LeanFT are just in essence APIs, we need something to write, run, and debug our test in, and that's where these IDEs come in. So another question will be, will other IDEs be supported? For example, I know IntelliJ is a very popular IDE. At this time, it's not supported, but I hear that HP does have it on their development list. Uh, LeanFT is brand new. Not everything is supported as of yet, but I highly recommend if you have a IDE that you want supported, that you just contact HP to get it on their roadmap going forward. I know my team uses Spring's tool suite, so that's not supported by LeanFT. I really do need it supported by LeanFT, so I'll probably put in a request and try to get that on the roadmap. So not only can you use the same IDEs and languages as your developers, you can also use the same unit testing frameworks to run your test within Visual Studio or Java. So if you're using Visual Studio as of now, what's officially supported is MS test and NUnit. And for Java, you have JUnit. Now I know there's other frameworks that you can use within both IDEs. HP is not saying you can't use those other frameworks. All they're saying is the only ones that have been officially tested by HP are JUnit, NUnit, and MS Test. A lot of these things we're gonna go over today really do require you to see it. So if you wanna see LeanFT in action, I already created some videos on joecolantoner.com. And I've also been a guest on two webinars, one for Apply Tools on cross-browser validation testing, using Apply Tools with LeanFT, and one as a Vivid webinar on Shift Left with LeanFT testing. And I'll have a link to both of those in the show notes at www.testtalks.com forward slash 63. For now, I just want you to sit back, relax, and imagine the steps as I walk you through a very simple workflow so you get a flavor for how to create a test within LeanFT. So first, you wanna select your IDE. We already went over, it supports both Visual Studio and Java. So for this, let's pretend we're using Visual Studio. Next, you wanna select your testing framework. So once you've installed LeanFT, when you start up Visual Studio, underneath your test template section, you'll have three new templates under C Sharp. One is for an application model from LeanFT, and two others, one is for MS Test, and the other one is for NUnit. So for this example, we'll be using MS Test. Once you select which template you want to use, when you start up Visual Studio, all the framework annotations that you need in order to get started using either MS Test or NUnit will already be in your template. All you need to do then is just create your test methods that you want to use and then go to test run and you'll be able to run your test. And caveat, if you're using MS Test, you don't need to do anything else. If you are using NUnit, you do need to first install NUnit into your project. So if you were using Java, when you go to file new, and click on other, you'll have an option now under new for a LeanFT folder. And under LeanFT, you have two options for LeanFT JUnit project and LeanFT JUnit test case. All right, back to our Visual Studio project. So once you have the template loaded, you're gonna to wanna to import the HP LeanFT SDKs. If you wanted to test a web app, what you would do is you would import with the using hp.lft.sdk.web. And when you do leanft.sdk. You'll see all the options of what's currently supported by LeanFT. So the options you have for SDKs are the SAP, Standard Window, Web, WinForms, and WPF. As I said earlier, this is a brand new product. I'm sure over time HP is going to be adding to this. As of now, those are the five technologies that are currently supported. So if you want to test a web application, what you would do now is you would go to your test method, and you would start adding the code to test your application. So just to make this easier, I'm just gonna put everything within this test method. This is not how you would create a framework. This is just to give you a, an idea of how to create a test. So you first wanna create a variable instance of a iBrowser. So you would type iBrowser, browser equals browser factory dot launch. And then for parameters, you would type in browser type dot, and then you would have an option for which browser you wanna test against. So you would see an option for Chrome, Firefox, or IE. Uh, for this example, I'll be using Chrome. Once you have a browser variable, you then have access to all the methods of the browser. So if you were to type browser dot, you would see all the different methods you could perform on a browser. So I'm gonna choose navigate, and for the parameter, I'm just gonna to navigate to the leanfthelp.saz.hp.com site. Once you navigate to your application, you then wanna start interacting with the different fields on your screen. So for that, you need to create a test object. And a test object basically 
includes unique property values to help ID the object you want LeanFT to work with in your application. There are three main ways to do this in LeanFT. You can use either the object ID center, an application model, or descriptive programming. So the method probably most familiar to everyone that's been using QTP or UFT is using the object identification center. It basically is exactly like the object spy they are used to already within QTP. So within your IDEs, you'll have an option for the object repository center. So the icon is a top hat. So if you're in Visual Studio or in Java, they both have the same icon. So when you click on the object identification center, it then brings up it then brings up the spy. And in the spy, when you click on start spying, you just point to the field that you want to interact with and then the spy would then list out all the properties that are available to you. And what's kind of cool is it actually gives you recommendations of what properties to use in order to make it uniquely identifiable. So if there are three properties that need to be used in order to identify that object, it'll highlight, it'll put a star next to the properties that it recommends that you use. You just select on the properties you want to use in order to identify your field. And then just to make sure everything's working, there's a highlight option. So if you click on the highlight, it will just blink the field if it finds it. And then what you can do is you can then click on the generate code to clipboard icon. And what this is going to do, it's going to automatically create the code that you need to then paste into your test script. And that code will basically include the property values needed to identify that object. Once you have that describe block within your code, you then just need to assign a variable to it. Just pretend we want to click on a link called frequently asked questions FAQ. So you could create a variable called var FAQ link equals browser.describe and the code that you just pasted in there that the spy recommended you use in order to identify that object. So if you can imagine, if you had a lot of fields in your application, you'd have a lot of describe blocks throughout your code and this would make your test hard to maintain. So a way around this is HP also created a new option called an application model. And it's very similar to the concept you already know if you've used UFT or QTP for the object repository. So what you can do then is rather than have these describe blocks all throughout your code, you could rather create an application model by right clicking on your project and then selecting add lean FT and then selecting an application model option. Within that application model object, you can then add all the descriptions you need to identify your application. So you can create an application model and then add all the different fields to that application model that you then want to reference within your script. So basically when you open up the application model, you have an option to add an object and to add an object, you just basically just give it the name of the object, the type of technology you want to interact with and the properties it needs in order to identify that object. So you can build this out just like you normally would an object repository. So once you have that application model set up for your project, you can then reference it in all your other tests, all your other projects, just like you would an object repository. So within your test, rather than doing a describe block, all you have to do is instantiate that object model. And once you do that, you can then access all the objects that are in your application model. So I called mine JoApp. So for that code, it would look like JoApp app equals new JoApp. And the parameter would be the browser or whatever you called your driver instance. Now that I have a variable pointed to my application model, when I type in app dot, I would then have access to all the fields in my object repository and then be able to interact with them just like I would if I had all the describe blocks in my code. This might be hard to imagine. So like I said, I do have examples of this within my blog at joecalantonio.com. And the links to all this will be in the show notes at www.testtalks.com forward slash 63. And now because my describe block is of link type, I then have access to all the link methods that I can perform against a link. So I want to click on the link. So I would just type FAQ link dot select click. So when you start using LeanFT, you'll notice right away that a lot of these methods and objects are very familiar to if you've already used UFT or Quick Test Professional. And the reason being is the LeanFT SDK provides a very similar set of objects and methods based on the UFT QTP model. For example, the reporter object that's in UFT or QTP is also available within LeanFT. So if you want to write a custom report, in LeanFT, all you need to do is report a dot report event and pass it the same exact parameters that you're already used within UFT or QTP. And of course, all this and of course, all this information will be stored in the LeanFT report. 
Uh, it's a brand new report. It looks very similar to the reporter you're already familiar with. However, it's all HTML based. So all you would have to do to share this with your teams is just send them the HTML. You don't have to do anything in extra or they don't have to have any extra applications on their machine in order to read the report. So the report will include all the summary information about the run as well as the detailed information and optional screen captures for the steps performed on your application during your test run. And so once we navigate to the web page, we click on the frequently asked questions link, then you can close the browser just by doing a browser.close. So this was just an example to give you an idea of how LeanFT really was designed to provide an easy learning curve for HP Unified Functional Testing users. And it does this multiple ways. One of it is by providing the SDK object model that provides a very similar set of test objects and methods. Also, the LeanFT application model and object identification center tools include a subset of the functionality provided by the UFT object repository and object spy that most of you are already familiar with. And you can even use simple commands to convert your existing UFT object repositories to LeanFT's application models. So this brings me to my second top feature in LeanFT that's going to help you and your company shift left. And that is LeanFT is easier to use than Selenium if you are already familiar with UFT and QTP. So the learning curve is going to be easier for companies that already have users of QTP and UFT, rather than just jump to Selenium, if they use LeanFT, it's gonna be a quicker, easier transition because a lot of the concepts that we've talked about already should already be familiar to your testers. And I know how painful this can be if you are a company that needs to hire more dev type testers. I interview a lot of people for various testing roles in my company, and it's really a big challenge to find qualified candidates that have the developer tester skills we're looking for. So if you can leverage skills that current testers already have with QTP UFT, I think that that will make it a little bit easier to find more qualified people or to at least get more people involved in the more dev type of testing that your companies need as they shift left. So once you have your LeanFT test scripts created, you can now integrate them also with popular version control integration systems like Git and SBN. Here's another top three feature of how LeanFT is gonna help you shift left with your automation efforts. If you're already using UFT, UFT 12.5 also includes the option now where you can integrate with these popular version control tools like Git and SVN. And this is important once again, because if you're using the same process and tools as your developers, a big key process of that is version control and code reviews, being able to keep track of changes of your test script over time. So right now, this has been painful for me because I have two frameworks. I have a Selenium framework and I have a QTP framework. And my Selenium framework completely integrates with our version control per force system. And when I do code reviews and collaborator, I'm able to see all the differences that have been checked into my version control system and be able to make comments on it. With QTP, they have to print out the report in an HTML PDF format, and then they put that into our code review system, and it's very static. It's not easy to keep track of. But with this new feature of being able to integrate with other version controls other than ALM, which is not optimal for us, this is perfect. Another practice that's probably going on in your companies if your company is currently shifting left is continuous integration. And LeanFT also integrates with CI systems like Jenkins. So now you can also run your LeanFT tests within your CI systems, just like you would your Selenium test. So this is a big win also. And as I said at the beginning of the show, one of the biggest benefits of shifting left is hopefully to increase the collaboration of your teams to find bugs earlier in the development process. And one way that's being done in many companies is using something like behavior-driven development. And my company does use behavior-driven development, so that brings me to the fifth feature that LeanFT is gonna help you and your company shift left, and that is the ability for LeanFT to integrate with Cucumber. So now you can write behavior-driven development test in Visual Studio or in Java, and you could then integrate with the different Cucumber implementations like SpecFlow or Cucumber JVM and have the same type of automation process that you probably already do if you used a tool like Selenium. So this is awesome. So if you have, like I do, 
a lot of integrations with non-browser applications. This was very difficult to do with behavior-driven development. A lot of those we'd have to make as manual tests so that we'd have to have a mapping to them within our behavior-driven development feature files that go to ALM and then have a report at the end that reads in the results from the manual tests that ran in ALM with our automated tests within Selenium into one report. It's a big pain, but now if we have these types of integrations, a lot of these no longer are gonna have to be manual tests because we can then take advantage of LeanFT's many non-browser SDKs like standard browser windows and Java applications and be able to interact with these applications now rather than have manual tests all within our developer type framework. Cool, so. Another question you might be asking is, can you use your existing UFT license to run LeanFT? And the answer is yes. You can install LeanFT from the UFT installation in 12.5 and use the same exact seat license key for both installations. Also, you can install a standalone version of LeanFT with a dedicated LeanFT license. Also, if you have a functional test and concurrent license service set up that have UFT licenses on it, that also can be used to run your LeanFT test. I'm sure you have many other questions, and the best way to get answers to those questions right now probably, so a great resource to find frequently asked questions for LeanFT is to head on over to leanft-help.saz.hp.com and click on their frequently asked questions section, and it has a list of many questions you're probably dying to ask or know about right now. And I'll have that once again in the show notes at www.testtalks.com forward slash 63. So those are my top five features in LeanFT that are gonna help you and your company with their shift left efforts. And they are the ability to use the same developer languages as your developers along with their favorite IDEs and unit testing frameworks. It's easier to use than Selenium if you are already familiar with UFT and QTP. It integrates with popular version control integrations like Git and SVN. You can use it also within your CI systems and it integrates with popular behavior-driven test tools like Cucumber. You wanna learn about another service that will help revolutionize your shift left efforts? Check out Sauce Labs by heading over to testtalks.com and clicking on the more info link under the exclusive sponsor section to learn all about Sauce Labs awesome products and services. And if you had an extra second, I would love it if you went ahead and left a review in iTunes. I've been stuck at 31 for a while now. And the more reviews we get, the better we get in the rankings. And your feedback really helps the show become even better. So that's it for this episode of Test Talks. I'm Joe, and my mission is to help you succeed with automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Test Talks podcast. Head on over to www.testtalks.com for full show notes, amazing blog articles, and other automation awesomeness.